officer's duties were to lock down and secure the building. Excuse me, sir. Weird things happen around here. I felt this presence behind me. I felt trapped. This is not your home. You will haunt here no more. I have never been this fearful in my entire life. I don't care how tough you are. If something comes to you in the middle of the night, you're going to be screaming just like a little kid. You shouldn't be you are about to watch is based on true events. Some details have been altered to protect confidentiality. My name is Anthony Simonelli and I work the night shift. While attending trade school by day, Anthony takes a night job as a peace officer at the headquarters for a large metropolitan union. In 1997, I was a peace officer in a union hall. I needed this job to support my family, and I was also studying to become an electrician. Anthony works the overnight shift in the old union hall, five nights a week. Hey. hey. Uh, I first walked in the building, I really didn't have any bad feelings or anything about the building. They seemed like a nice, normal place to work. The building's locked down, and the custodians are gone for the night. It's just us tonight. Got it? Got it. Most of the night I was alone, but I did work with another peace officer. He spends much of his shift patrolling the large, empty building on his own. It's a pretty big building. It has a bank in it, has a medical department, and it has uh, multiple people that actually work there for the union. Peace officers' duties were to lock down and secure the building at night. We would um, go lock each of the floors off and well patrol and make sure there's nobody on the floor and make sure they're secure for the night. On the medical floor, I was doing rounds, locking up, and I could hear footsteps and something coming up very closely to me. It stopped. I, didn't, I was a little nervous, but I figured it stopped. Kept on walking maybe another 15 feet. And it's, I heard it again. Anthony follows the footsteps to the nursing station. Hello? Anyone here? He finds the room completely empty. Hello? Just made me um, nervous. I was by myself with just a flashlight looking in the dark. Certain that an intruder is close by, Anthony continues his sweep of the floor. a presence behind me. I stopped and I didn't see anything there. I said, who's there? I 
don't know what it was or who it was, but it felt like it was right behind me. If there's anyone here, show yourself. And I was very nervous. I was scared. Show yourself. I just wanted to get out of there, and I did that, that floor very quickly, and I was out of there and back to where I felt safe. Must be hearing things. I was hoping that this would be the only time I heard anything like this, because it did put a strain on my wanting to be there. But I had to do my job. The following night, Anthony returns to the medical wing and resumes his patrol. Hello? Ma'am? And I seen a woman walk by very quickly. What are you doing here? The, the building's closed. Dark hair, she's, I would say, late 20s, and she was dressed in scrubs. I knew something wasn't right when I seen her, because the hairs on my neck and my arm hair stood up. Ma'am! female figure leads Anthony to the nursing station. Hello? Once again, the room is completely empty. There was a desk there and the phone started ringing. As I walk up to the desk, the phone kept on ringing, ring, 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 ring. No one should be calling us up at that time. The, the, the office was closed uh, many hours before. And I was hesitant to pick it up because I didn't know who would be on the other side. I reached out my hand. And the phone stopped ringing. The phone may have stopped ringing, but something else in the room is making noise. It scared the out. While patrolling a large union hall at night, Peace Officer Anthony encounters an intruder that turns out to be a terrifying paranormal entity. I have friends. Seeing a full body apparition is actually pretty rare um, when you are experiencing a haunting. She didn't look like a solid person because I can actually see through her. In Anthony's case, the woman that he sees is most likely a residual haunting. A residual haunting is sort of like a psychic imprint on a location. So the spirit is just repeating actions that they did when they were alive. I think it's for me. I had to get out of there quick. At that moment, I was scared. I didn't know what was going on. Anthony is determined to get some answers. I never experienced anything like what was going on in this hall. So I felt there was something more supernatural. The phone was right there. As soon as I went to pick it up, as soon as I touched it, it stopped ringing. Went back to the Sarge. And I told him what happened, and I told him I seen a woman in that room. She was dressed like a nurse. You're not going to believe this. There was a nurse who worked here. Anthony is shocked by what his co-worker says next. She used to work late some nights, so I'd check up on her. Hello? 
Anyone here? I'm the one that found her. She was dead. What happened to her? Nobody knows how she died. The cause of the nurse's death was never determined by authorities and remains unknown to this day. Weird things happen around here. Him saying that weird things happen didn't make me feel any better. It just got me more nervous. I just didn't want to do that floor anymore, go into that area. If this place is haunted, shouldn't we tell somebody? Listen, do you like working here? Just keep your mouth shut. Okay. I think he experienced things throughout the years he's been there, and I don't think he liked to speak about it because he worked nights and he didn't want to scare himself. I really didn't have a choice to leave the job because the benefits and uh, the pay was, was decent and I just couldn't leave. The next night, he begins his shift in another part of the building. Constantly, as you walk through, you would stop, turn around, Shine a flashlight in that area. You will actually walk around corners and check them again because you think somebody actually was there. And that was that was very eerie and you know disturbing at times. It got to a point that certain rooms and areas of the, the building, I would go in and get out very quickly because I didn't want to experience anything else that was going on there. So Anthony's strategy to continue working at this job was to avoid certain areas of the building. If activity stops then, then he might be fine. But if he does notice that the activity is following him, then I highly advise that he leave. Anthony continues his rounds on the top floor. We used to lock the elevators off the keys on a panel that nobody could actually go up to that floor at night. Even though the floor should be secure, Anthony still has to check it. Excuse me, sir? Sir? Hello? Excuse me, sir? I look and I seen somebody walk by. The building's closed. Sir? Sarge? Oh, Sarge. Sarge, I, I just saw somebody in the upstairs hallway. Nobody oh, should be up there. The floor's been locked off for hours and nobody should be there. We'll check it out. I heard a conversation. It would sound like a couple of men and maybe a woman or two. And it was, uh, it was in like an intense conversation, like people were talking back and forth. Excuse me, just wanted to see who was still here. Swung my flashlight around to see somebody, if somebody's in the room or something. Behind the desk, there was a big portrait of a man. I put my flashlight on it, and I noticed that the man looked like the man in the hallway. Who's here? Where are you? The hairs on my back and my Where neck went up, and I just got really nervous. I started sweating and everything. I felt 
scrapped. I just had to get the hell out of there. When Anthony begins the night shift as a peace officer at a union hall. Hello? Ma'am? A series of disturbing sights and sounds lead him to a room. Excuse me, sir? That he now finds himself trapped in. I back out of the room and I hear I hear somebody say, thank you, good night. I lock the door, figuring if somebody's in there, they're locked in now. I couldn't believe that as I was experiencing these things, I couldn't believe it was real. I felt there was something in that building, a spirit, an entity that didn't want me to go in these areas or not didn't want me there at all. I just had to get the hell out of there. Heeding his co-worker's warning, Anthony tells no one about his terrifying encounter. I kept it to myself that I was nervous of doing these areas because, like I said, I needed a job. I had to go back and earn money to support my family. Fortunately for Anthony, the next several nights pass without incident, but it's just the calm before the storm. A few nights later, on the medical floor, I was doing rounds, locking up. I didn't want to be there because of what happened previously with the woman and the ringing of the phone. I heard a noise in one of the offices. The sounds lead Anthony back to the nursing station. I opened the door. The very room in which the nurse died. And this machine is moving on its own. Anthony searches for a way to turn off the machine. I actually looked for some sort of power source. What the hell? There's no power going to this machine. It should not be moving it at all. At that moment, I was scared. Whatever was manipulating that machine, it really feels like it didn't want Anthony to be in this building. If it could move that machine, it could move anything. It could be dangerous. Get out! Get out! I don't care how tough you are, how big you are. If something comes to you in the middle of the night, you're going to be running and screaming just like a little kid would. You got to tell me what's going on. Why is this happening? People spent their lives working here. Some people died here. Maybe they're just protecting a turf. I thought we were the ones protecting this place. Maybe they think where are the intruders? A spirit might become territorial for a couple reasons. One reason might be that it simply isn't even aware that it is dead. So when somebody comes into their space, they want them out of there. Get out! Anthony suddenly sees his terror in a new light. I felt that some of the spirits that I encountered, they were employees that spent more time in this building than actually in their homes.
Anthony has had enough of ghosts and hauntings. He resigns that very evening. I didn't want these things to happen anymore. I was relieved to actually uh, leave the building and go on with another job. After all these events, now I'm a believer. I believe in spirits and the afterlife. My name's Clark, and I work the night shift. I'm a classically trained concert pianist, and I have toured all over the world playing and recording. Tired of life on the road as a touring concert pianist. 28-year-old Clark is looking for a place to call home. I got tired of that work and um, wanted to get off the road and bought a concert hall. I had to sell my house to buy it. Come here. Come on. I was going to renovate it and learn the business of music presentation. To save money, Clark also lives at the old concert hall. I ended up having a living unit created in the hall so that um, um, I could manage things. When I first moved into the hall, the only other um, being that was there was my black lab, uh, Maya. The hall is a very old building. It was built in 1884. You expect to hear a few creaks and groans uh, as these buildings expand and contract with the weather and, and the time of day. I was hearing that quite a bit but also with its age and its dilapidated state. The hall had a reputation as a space that um, was a little bit creepy. I always thought that when people came up with these stories that they were um, either just figments of their imagination or hearing the creaking and the groaning of old buildings. Uh, so totally non-believer. The first strange experience happened to me about a year after I bought the hall. One night when I was closing down the hall, I felt this presence behind me. Turned around and nobody was there, but you could feel this presence. So um, I immediately thought someone had gotten into the building and I uh, had my flashlight with me. Hello? I had to look around every nook and cranny to make sure that nobody was hiding behind any of the spaces in the hall. I yelled out, is anyone there? And there, there was nothing. I went into this heightened state of panic because I'm the only one in the hall. We have a security system in the space, including motion detectors and door sensors. And the security system was on when this occurred.
my beautiful dog came in and started barking. And she's not a barker. And nothing. There was nothing. I knew there was no one else in that hall except me. Clark thinks exhaustion may be playing tricks on his mind. I've just been working so hard, 24-7, uh, uh, trying to keep everything together. I thought, oh, you're really starting to lose it, Clark. Um, you know, the, the fatigue's taking over and you're seeing things. next cannot be easily dismissed or explained besides running the hall i was still continuing with my career as a concert pianist i would often perform there it was a pleasure to play up there until things started to get a little bit creepy One night, I was performing with a violinist. And in the middle of our performance, I suddenly could not hear that violinist. And that violinist couldn't hear me either. The two of us locked eyes and had a very bewildered look on our faces, not really knowing um, what was happening. It was, it was a bit of a panic. It was the strangest thing ever. Um, and uh, we were only a very short distance from each other when it happened. In all my experience and understanding of science, it's, it's just something that's totally impossible. And yet it happened. We were able to, to communicate with each other uh, after a minute or so. And uh, we restarted and we didn't have that incident again during the performance. You could not put any logic behind this. When Clark was performing on stage with his fellow violinist, the way that their perception of sound was being manipulated is something that I personally have never encountered. I believe that this sonic manipulation that's happening could be paranormal because of all the other activity that's been happening. After the performance, we had a chat about it and, and wondered what the heck had happened up there. I gotta go, Clark. I'm done with this place. Please. Maybe you should cleanse this place. And then a number of other performances within the two-week period experienced exactly the same thing. And we had some of the performers come to us and say, what's going on up there? Through all of these experiences, we were running the risk of getting a very bad reputation where people would not want to come and perform. We actually have had quite a famous performer uh, who um, just said, there's no way I'm coming back there ever again. This is a nightmare for Clark as a business owner and as a resident in the concert hall. I was beginning to wonder what could possibly happen next. Clark doesn't have to wait long for an answer. The strange creaks and groans, my dog barking, the strange performances. I began to sense that I wasn't the only one in the hall. Looking to escape life on the road, Clark buys his own concert hall. He begins to suspect the presence of unseen forces when strange events occur both backstage and on the stage. I suddenly could not hear that violinist. His suspicions are confirmed when he has a terrifying encounter. It seemed like a real person to me at first um, and was dressed in this um, 
uniform that was red, so I thought it maybe it was like a red coat from the War of 1812. My adrenaline just started flooding through me. So I barricaded myself inside my living unit. I was beginning to wonder if I was actually losing it. You know, I, I just really need to get some sleep. I saw this entity in the corner of the bedroom. I was absolutely paralyzed in fear. I have never been this fearful in my entire life. I would say on a scale of one to 10, I was at a full 10. I could not believe uh, what I was seeing. When Maya uh, started barking at this entity, it was affirmation that it wasn't just me seeing something, uh, that this other creature could also see this strange entity in the corner of my bedroom. The hair was up on her back. She was frightened as well. I left the room thinking that maybe when I come back in, I won't see this again. When I walked back into the room, I saw it immediately, still standing in the same place, right in the corner of the room. I never thought I'd be so scared. Why didn't you leave the building? I did have the thought that I should probably go and sleep somewhere else, for sure. But, you know, I had put my blood, sweat, and tears into this place. Clark takes refuge in the hall, any place other than his bedroom. I had to be brave. I had to make it work. And, and I was willing to, to do whatever it took to, to do that. I thought, what should I do? I, I, like, I can't function, I'm not sleeping. This is, this is freaking me out. Clark tries to make sense of what is happening. One of the interesting things that I discovered that may be related is the fact that right across the street from the hall, there used to be two graveyards. They were very old. These graveyards were moved in the early 19th century to another location. I feel that there's a good possibility that some of these spirits may be um, from these burial grounds, but I'm not sure. The spirit of the soldier that keeps reappearing to Clark is definitely an intelligent spirit because it is directly acknowledging Clark's presence and is trying to interact with him. A lot of the times with an intelligent haunting, they're a result of a spirit just wandering aimlessly, not really having a purpose. At this point, I was not sure what I should be doing or thinking uh, about seeing these things. I, I felt um, either I buy into the fact that there's something very strange going on in this hall uh, that I can't explain, or I just say, I'm exhausted. I'm, you know, maybe I'm done because I'm starting to um, see and feel things that uh, don't make any, any sense whatsoever.
my friend and I decided to do a clearing ceremony of the hall, beginning with my bedroom. We did some rituals involving talking to the entity. This is not your home. It is time to move on. One of them told me to give the entity some direction. This is not your home. It is time to move on. You shall haunt here no more. You shall haunt here no more. This, this is, is not, not your home. home. It, it is, is time, time to move on. on. You, you will haunt, haunt here no more. more. This, this is, is not your home. It is time to move on. You will haunt here no more. This is not your home. It is time to move on. You will haunt here no more. I had this tingling feeling in my spine that I've never felt before. I felt the energy shift a little bit. I felt like it was finally over. For the first time in weeks, Clark sleeps peacefully. Clark awakes from a dead sleep, only to be confronted by his worst nightmare. In the corner of the room, you could see this figure. Why won't you leave me alone? Leave me alone, please! I was panicked, absolutely panicked. This figure was staring right at me. And I don't know if it was trying to communicate with me. In that moment, I was absolutely terrified. What do you want from me? Nearing his breaking point, Clark recalls his friend's advice. I need you to go. Go and guard the back door. They said, well, you should give it some direction. Like, go tell it to guard the back door. And so I did. I need you to go. Go and guard the back door. And surprisingly, the the entity left. A lot of the times with an intelligent haunting, they're a result of a spirit just wandering aimlessly, not really having a purpose. And so when Clark gave this red coat spirit a job, it left him alone. That whole fight or flight mechanism that they say people have, um, I can attest to. Um, I was really torn between staying and running. Since that time, I have never experienced that feeling again. Um, it was definitely uh, something that I can't even imagine putting myself back into that state. Clark leaves that night. Living at the hall proves too much. In order to make it work, he'll need to foster a new perspective. In 2011, I met the man of my dreams and I moved out of the hall, so I no longer live there, but I work there every day. This experience of seeing this entity in my bedroom still haunts me to this very day. 
It will never ever leave me. It has become part of my life because I see this figure from time to time in the hall. It's just a, an almost a normalcy of something very abnormal. I had no belief whatsoever in the paranormal when I bought this space. I definitely am a believer uh, now. I had enough experiences, concrete experiences, to believe that there is this other dimension and there are other beings in those dimensions. Uh, we're not alone. <laughs> 